want to thank God who is our Father. Happy Father's Day to, to you, God the Father. We thank you, Lord, for all the fathers in this house. We thank you, Lord, how you preserve them. For all the fathers that are watching all over the world, I will thank God for your life, for what God is doing. I will bless his holy name. Happy Father's Day to you all. We are grateful. Ah, you preserved all our fathers. We are grateful. Thank you this morning, Almighty God. We bless your holy name. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. In Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 through 14. Revelation 5, 11 to 14. He said, and I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne. The living creatures, the elders, the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying, what is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So this morning, O oh Lord, we are joining the host of heaven to say thank you to you. Father, thank you. Thank you for the grace that you bestowed upon you, on us. We bow down before you this morning. We will worship you because you are the fathers of the fathers. Ah, we bless you. We give you grace. We hallow your holy name. What a marvelous God you are. There's none like you. There's none beside you. We are here this morning. Our gathering is unto you to say thank you. Thank you for preservation. We are almost at the end of the six months in this year. You preserved us from January, February, March, April, May. And June, Father, we worship you. It's not in our doing. It's not because we are righteous, but because of who you are, because of your loving mercy. We are grateful. Thank you for you have extended your mercy upon us. Father, we bless you. Thank you, our helper. Thank you, our shepherd. Thank you, our redeemer. We give you grace. Thank you, our uncle. Blessed be your holy name. Father, we give you grace. Thank you for peace. Even in spite of all the turmoils around us, we give you grace. We glorify you, our comforter, and the lifter of our head, our rock of ages. We bless you this morning. What a mighty God you are, King of kings and Lord of lords. Adonai, we bless you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. This morning, we are asking for mercy. Say, create in me, O King God, O God, and renew right spirit within me. Create in me, O Amen. And this morning, oh Lord, we 
we surrender the service, Holy Spirit. We know you already here because you sent them to a prayer. God, are you there? We surrender the service, take control. Move like you never moved before. In the name of Jesus, we need your heavens to open. Let the glory of the Lord come. In the name of Jesus. This morning, we pray that Lord God, you will move upon her in the name of the Let her speak with power, with anointing, with fresh fire in the name of Jesus. Father, that right word you have for us today, we pray that you, will, you have given it to us, you will deliver it in the way you want her to deliver it in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for the word that word will put forth. We do what he's supposed to do. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Father's Day. Can we be in the mood of worship? Let's be on our feet as we begin to worship our Heavenly Father, the Father of all fathers. As we acknowledge His headship over our lives, over our home, Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. Thank you. 
Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for being there, for being faithful. Lord, we heal you. Bless them. adopting us into his family, for making us his own children. 
I will pray that in the name of Jesus, as many of us have been adopted into this family, we will not lose our sonship in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, we help us to hold on unto the head in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, Lord King of glory, we thank you. We worship and exalt your holy name. We thank you for another time in your presence. We ask God Almighty, as we go into your word, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you speak to us yourself, Lord, in Jesus' name. That exact word, oh God, that you have for each and every one of us. Father, let it comfort unto us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask God Almighty that, Lord, the blessing of this day, oh God, will not elude us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Today, we'll be continuing with the theme for the month. The high priest of a profession. The high priest of a profession. And today, we'll be looking at confessing him. Confessing him. That is, we need to confess this high priest of our profession, of our confession. So walk the walk of faith. You know, this walk of faith that we're in, successfully, to the point you know, that will gain heaven, we must consider Jesus. We need to consider Jesus. That is, we need to pay attention to him because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And considering him also means seeking to do things the way he did. Reacting to things the way he did and the way he will do. Because what? He has also walked this walk of faith that we are walking. He came to this earth as a man. All that we're going through, you know, whatever we're going through, you know, based on our faith, he also went through it while he was here on earth. Also, considering him could mean equipping ourselves with the word of God. Equipping ourselves with the word of God. And we knew that white Christ was also on earth, you know, after the 40 days and 40 night fast he had, you know, the devil came to tempt him. And what? He faced the devil with the word of God. So for us also, you know, to be victorious in our war, we must equip ourselves with the word of God. May God help us in Jesus' name. This work of faith cannot be practiced based on human philosophy. You know, it can't be practiced based on human ideology. You Not know, just the way you just feel it's just a moral, the way that things need to be done. No, we have to do it according and run and walk it according to the word of God. What does the word of God say concerning you know, the things that we do? We need to follow the word of God. So for us to walk this walk of faith, we must constantly and deliberately consider Jesus. We need to consider Jesus. May the Lord God Almighty help us to walk this walk circumspectly and cautiously in the name of Jesus. Walking this walk of faith involves also a public profession, a public confession of our faith according to our text of the month, that is Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. It said, Therefore, holy brethren, partaker of Evelyn calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ. So we have to confess Jesus Christ. So what, you know, what do we mean by confession? What do we mean if you say we need to confess? Number one, it means that what we need to declare, acknowledge, attest, or make known. So we need to confess Jesus. We need to make him known wherever and whenever we have. We need to make him known. We need to declare him in all that we do. So what are we to confess? Remember, we said that the theme for the money, the high priest of our profession, we'll be looking today at confessing in. 
So if you say confessing, what are we to confess? What are we to confess? Number one, we must confess or declare your sinful practices. You must confess and declare your sinful practices. Acts chapter 19, verse 18. Acts 19, 18. Acts 19, 18. It said, many who became believers confessed their sin for practices. Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. So we must confess our sinful practices. We must confess our sinful acts. We must confess our sinful deed. If we are to confess the high praise of our profession, we must first of all confess our sinful practices. Matthew chapter 3, verse 9, 16. Matthew 3, 16 also says, confessing their sin, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. Confessing their sin, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. So the first thing that we must confess is our sins. Is our sin. The Bible tells us that our God is so holy that what he cannot behold iniquity. So for us to come unto him, for us to confess, to profess him, we must first of all confess our sins. We must first of all confess our sins. Proverbs 28 verse 13. Proverbs 28 13. Proverbs 28 13 says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. So we must confess first to obtain mercy. You know, if you have not yet identified, okay, this is what I'm doing that is not good. This is what I'm doing that may make me an enemy of God. We must identify that first. Confess it so that we can obtain mercy of God. Just as we saw in Proverbs 28. Verse 13 says that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but he that confesses. So we must confess our sin. We must confess our sin. And from this verse also, we saw that even after for confessing them, we need to also forsake it. You need to forsake it. That is what if you have said, Oh, you have not, this is the wrong that I do. We must not go there again. We must not continue or we must not go back to begin to do such things again after we have confessed. So we person who, who confesses what I'm forsake that we will obtain the mercy of God, that we obtain his mercy. Because we know that sin strive in secrecy. You know, what you tend to cover, what you begin to do in the secret, not make known. You begin to go deeper and deeper into such things. But when you confess and it's known, you, know, you get help and you have mercy and also forgiveness. May God Almighty help us to forsake and to confess before our, all our sins before him in Jesus' name, so that we can obtain his mercy in the name of Jesus. Confessing of your sin implies that what you have to also identify the wrongdoings, just like that you must identify the things that you do wrong, the things that are not pleasing unto God. If we are to confess him, if you are to confess him as he is the high priest of our profession, remember that we must confess our sins first. First John first John 1 verse 9. First John chapter 1 verse 9. First John chapter 1 verse 9. It's great. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us. That is what it would cleanse us. It would take off all that the messy things, you know, all the messy, all the dirt, oh God, that we have put upon ourselves as a result of this sin. It would take them off. It would cleanse us 
and make us a new being. So we need to confess so that what we can have is forgiveness and also a cleansing. James chapter 5, verse 16. James 5, 16. James 5, verse 16. James 5, 15 says, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The first confession you know, that we talked about was one that is has not yet come to the body of Christ. The one who has not accepted the Lord Jesus as is our Lord and Savior. But this second type of confession was, he said, will confess one to another. You know, this has to do with well, those of us who are already in the faith. Maybe you have, we have struggles, we have something we are struggling with, you know, we say what, confess one to another, so that what, we can lift up ourselves in the place of prayer, to God, you know, to grant the able, enablement to overcome the struggles that we go through. So we need to confess one to another, you know, maybe there are struggles, there are things that you are, you know, you are struggling with as a child of God, when we confess one to another, you know, we pray for one another, and from that, we are healed, just as we saw in that uh, James chapter 5, verse 16. He said, confess to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The first type of confession brings about cleansing. It brings about forgiveness. But this second confession that we confess one to another brings about healing. It brings about healing. Because we saw in that James 5 verse 16 that what the effectual and fervent prayers of the righteous man are the less much. So as brethren, if you have struggles, if you have things you're struggling with, you know, in our walk of faith, confess one to another so that we lift ourselves up in the place of prayer and we are healed, just as we saw in that verse. We are healed. So this first, uh, let's remember the first confession brings about forgiveness and cleansing. The second one, which is among you know, the people of faith, you have anything you're struggling with, bring about healing and also prayers that will be converted prayer of the brethren. Brings about healing until you have confessed your sin and received forgiveness and cleansing. You cannot go to the second step of the confession. After you can't go to professing Christ, confessing Christ. If you have not confessed your sin, forsake them and receive forgiveness and cleansing. The second confession that we must make before we can profess, confess the high priest of our profession is that we must confess or declare Jesus. We must confess and declare Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We must confess and declare Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10. Romans 10, verses 9 to 10. Romans 10, verses 9 to 10. It says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10 says, For with your heart you believe and are justified, and with your mouth you confess and are saved. We must but declare Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You must declare him as your Lord and Savior. That is the second step to our confession. Remember our topic, you no, know, under the a theme, the high priest of our profession is confessing him. And we say, what are we to confess? The first thing that we say, we must confess, we must confess our sinful practices. We must confess our sinful thing. We must make them known. We must confess them. And the second confession is that what we need to confess the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior, as our Lord and Savior. And this verse, Romans 10, verses 9 to 10, say that we must what, confess the Lord Jesus with our mouth, you know, it's beyond the believing that in our, but we must confess him 
that Jesus is Lord. And that was in our hearts, we believe that God raised him from the dead. After which now, we will be saved. He said, you will be saved. After you have confessed that he's Lord with your mouth, you have believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Confess him with your mouth. Confess him with your mouth. Make him know, declare that Jesus is Lord. Is Lord, is the Almighty. Another thing that we must confess is that we must also confess him before men. Confess him before men. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Matthew 10, 32. Matthew 10, 32. The, I'll be reading the message translation. Matthew 10, uh, 32. It's straight. Stand up for me against world opinion. Stand up for me against world opinion. And I will stand up for you before my Father in heaven. Stand up for me against world opinion, and I will stand up for you before my Father in heaven. If you turn tail and run, do you think I will cover you? He says, stand up for me. You know, this gold note brings more meaning than just confess. He says, stand up for me against world opinion. You know, there are certain things that have become you know, the norms, the things you know, that are acceptable in the society, but is it okay with God? You know, you find people saying, oh, some kind of lies are white lies, you know, you just need to use wisdom, but that is also a lie. That somebody, you know, gets into work and you need to sign the time that you came in, you got there at maybe nine o'clock and the time is supposed to be there is 8.30. See, people, you know, put 8.30 because feel that nobody is there and people see it as just a normal thing to do and it's okay. Or you are supposed to go for a 30 minutes break when you use one and a half hours. You know, just we need to stand up to Jesus in there with things that you know that's happening around us. There are things you know, that are not acceptable to go. We must make our stand known. We can't be on the fence. We must make our stand known. This verse said, What if you stand for me before? If you stand up for me against what will be there, he said, I will stand up for you before my father. We can't sit on the fence. I think that was the time when your position was on uh, Ellen's uh, show, and her opinion was asked about gay or something. You know, she just, you know, doesn't say anything. We must make our stand known. It is whatever is not of God is not of God. We must stand for him. We must stand for him. Just as uh, Daniel did. You know, when uh, the king said, he raised up a statue and said, well, they must bow to him. He said, no, he was poor. He said, no, be careful not to answer. But what? We will not bow to these statues. You know, how many things are we being asked to bow to? You know, just, we just feel, oh, that's just the way it's being done. You know, we follow the crowd. No. He just said, if you stand up for me against world opinion, he said, we also stand up for you. We must stand up for God. We can't continue to be on the fence as Christian. Whatever is not right is not right. You know, a child of God, maybe you, to go into uh, office, there's people who work in a place and you're asked to dress in a particular way. And you know that that way of dressing is not acceptable to go. You know, to say you have to reveal yourself because you're a marketer, you know, you have to make some part of your body to show. No. We must say no to it. You no, know, we can't sit on the fence and just say, oh, not minding what the consequence of those acts must be. We must stand up for Jesus. We must declare him in any condition and not minding what it's going to cost us, even if it costs us our job, you know, whatever, because God we, that we serve, we know we always stand for us and he will always defend us. He will never put us to shame. So we must stand up for him if we want him to stand up for us. And we know that we need him to stand up for us. Even just as you know, we know all that is going on in the world now, if it's not God who has been standing by us, what will have become of us? So if we want God to stand up for us, we must stand for him and keep standing for him. As Christians, we cannot be on the fence concerning things that we know 
clearly that is not acceptable to God. It's not acceptable to God. You know, somebody tell you to lie. You know, just a cover up. You know, it's 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 not acceptable. There's no wife that there's no little that there's no no little sin. We must stand up for him. We must always declare that which is right. Whatever is not acceptable to God should not be acceptable to us as Christians. And we start there. He said, if you cannot stand before, if you cannot stand up for me against worldly opinion, if you cannot confess me before me, he said also, he will not confess us before his, his, uh, his father. So some also, also, also say some worldly opinion, I just you know, feel in everything you need to bribe your way. You know, it's just a normal thing, you know, just give them tips and all. But you know what? It is not acceptable. We must continually and constantly stand up for Jesus. Just to recap, let's remember what we've been looking at this morning is confessing him under our made him the high priest of our profession. We talk about confessing him and that what to run this way, to walk this way, we must consider Jesus because what is the author and the finisher of our faith. He also walks this faith as a man. So we must seek, consider constantly looking at the word of God to see the things that it is so that we can also do them and aspire to do even more than he did while he was here because he said what well, even much more than he did, you know, that we are going to do. May God Almighty help us in Jesus' name. I will say before we can confess in as our profession, at the aspect of our profession, we must first of all confess our sins. Confess our sins. You know, confess our sins so that what we can receive forgiveness and cleansing. And also we talk about confessing our sins one to another. That's for those who are already in the faith. You know, in our journey of faith, there might be things on one at one point or the other, we might be struggling with one thing or the other. But when we confess to one another, we receive prayer and also healing because it's other the effective and fervent prayer of the righteous are much. May God Almighty help us in Jesus' name. Another thing that we must uh, confess, that we must confess that he came in the flesh. He came in the flesh. He came in the flesh. First John chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. First John 4, 2 to 3. 1 John 4, 2 to 3. It said, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Verse 3. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist which was heard was coming and is now already in the world. He said what? We must confess that it came in the flesh. And it says that every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is the spirit of God, is the spirit of God. And whichever spirit that was, and anyone who does not confess that he came in the flesh is not of God. So what is an answer Christ? It's not of God and is an answer. So we must confess that he came in the flesh. You know, some people believe that he said it's God. He, he didn't give birth to anyone and no one gave birth to him. So I didn't believe that what he came in the flesh for. Whoever, you no, know, we must confess that what he came in the flesh so that what we are considered to be of God. We must confess that he came in the flesh. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Hebrews 4, 15. Hebrews 4, 15 also says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we have, and yet he did not sin. He also was tempted just the way that we faced temptation. He was persecuted while he was on earth. So because he also walked this face of the earth, he felt what we're feeling. We need to always consider him. If Jesus can do it, we can also do it.
through it because he didn't come as a spirit. He came as a man and there was blood also flowing in his body. He came as a man. So he was he's able to empathize with us. He's able know, to also know the things that we face, the weaknesses that we have. So we must daily consider him and consider his work. So we must confess that he came also in the flesh. We must confess that he came in the flesh. Another thing that we need to confess before we can confess him as the high priest of our profession is that what we must confess his greatness. Confess his greatness. We must confess that he is a great God. We must confess his wondrous work, his greatness. We must confess that. Daniel chapter 9, verse 4. Daniel 9, verse 4. Daniel 9, verse 4. And I pray unto the Lord, my God, and I pray unto the Lord, my God, and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. Daniel declared that what is the great and the dreadful God. So we must confess the greatness of God, that great things he has done, there are things he has done in our lives to people around us. We must constantly confess his greatness. We must confess his greatness. If we need him to advocate for us, if we need him to plead our curse before the Father, we must daily and constantly confess his greatness. Even uh, an ordinary man, you know, when you keep singing his praise, when you keep, you know, say, oh, you are this, you are that, you know, almost say their head begins to swell. And what they are not even intend to do, you know, they begin to do it. You know, in those uh, days, you know, when the musicians are playing in Nigeria, they just notice that somebody is, maybe a great man hands, I know they begin to sing the praise of that person until the man drops or the woman drops the last of her penny. So she won't know because what? They're just singing. And so in the same way with our father, we must constantly confess his greatness, confess his greatness. Just as we know, you know, after dying, what is seated at the right hand of the father, you know, pleading our cause, you know, it's close to the father. So whatever, you know, Whatever we want, when we have of him, he plead our case before the Father. But what we must sing is greatness. We must sing is greatness. There's, uh, I think there's this uh, musician that said, well, he said, well, he's, he's an a, impossibility specialist. He said he was an extraordinary strategist. He said he seated in heaven and made the head his photo. So he's, you know, that is incredible God. We must every day. He does, does great and mighty things every day around. So we need to constantly sing of this great thing that he has done. We need to constantly sing of the great things he has done. It's not even just, no, you know, go out and say, oh, Jesus loves you, God wants. But when we talk about the greatness of God, you know, there are some things you, you will share with people and they are just drunk fun and say, oh, so God can do this. Like somebody who is already 60 something years, Bringing forth a child, you no, know, what the world thinks that is impossible. You no, know, we must constantly sing and confess the greatness of this our God because what he is a great God. He is a great God. We must constantly confess his greatness. We must confess his greatness. Confessing his greatness is also like hiring and heart to me, you know, and you ask someone to plead your case. And every time you go to the person, you're always talking down on him or her. Oh, you don't do this right. Oh, we are not that the last case you did was all uh, or was all just a mess. The person lost. I hope you are going to you know you're just saying the negative. Well, that's how a person plead your case, right? No, but when you go, oh, I've heard that even uh, there was a case, no, that seems as though it's going to head in a in, in, and there's no way to know that it's a case that looks at though that you're not going to win that what you're going to do. But I had one that you know you came victorious, you know, you are singing the prayer, you are such a wonderful man, you are such a wonderful lawyer, you are, you are this, you are that. That is human. But when we sing the praise of God, when we sing his praise, it what he pleads our kids, he fights for us, you know, he grants us the victory that we need. So we must sing 
is praised continually, the thing of his greatness. You know, not just to us, there are great things he has done. We shouldn't keep quiet. The great things he did for us, let's talk about it. Let's think of it. I pray that God Almighty will help us in the name of Jesus. Just as you know, we know the story of Paul and Silas, you know, they were in captivity, they were in the prison. What they did was they sang the praise of God. You know, even while the, the, the chains were in their hands, their leg, they sang the praise of God. And God came through for them. So just the same way, we need to constantly sing the greatness of God, sing his praise. I pray that it will always come true for us in Jesus' name. Conclusively, said it must be understood that before you and I can confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we must confess our sins. You know, that's where we say we must confess our sins. We can't confess him as Lord, as our high priest, if we don't confess him. We must confess him first. And after we have confessed him, no, we can now confess him. We can declare him. We can confess him before me. But the first thing that we need to do is to confess our sin, is to confess our sin. The Lord God Almighty help us in Jesus' name. So confess or declare with our mouth and before men, just as we do most confessing with our mouth and also before men. He said he that does not confess me before men, he will also not confess before his father. So we must confess our sin, confess the Lord Jesus, confess him before men, and also confess his greatness. May he help us in Jesus' name. First John chapter 2, verse 23 says, First John 1, First John 2, verse 23 says, No one who denies the Son has any part with the Father, but affirming the Son is an embrace of the Father as well. No one who denies the Father is a part of, denies the Son is a part of the Father. So we must confess him. And not confessing him means that what you deny him. You know, you are denying. That also means that what you are not a part of the Father, nor him. He is not living in you. If we don't confess him, he's not living in you. May God Almighty help us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, Lord, King of glory, we thank you for your word to us this morning. We ask God Almighty, the grace of God, to constantly and daily stand up for you. Father, please release upon us, Lord, in Jesus' name. As many also, you know, you have not confessed your sin, you have not met with the Savior. I want you to not confess your sin, that the Lord God Almighty will come into your heart, confess your sin before him, and ask that he forgives you and will be part of his family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for the word that has gone forth this morning. Let us stretch our hands to the master. The Lord God will replenish the virtue she has given out in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, we pray for overflow of your anointing upon her in the name of Jesus. The Lord God, in this time, this fullness of time, you will take her to a greater heart in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. It's time for tithes and offering. And in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Please, I will implore you to give generously. If you are writing a chair, is writing to our CCG New Life Assembly. If you are watching online, you can go to rccg.org, nla.org. Let me repeat, 
rccgnla.org and look for the link donate and the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus name Amen Let's read on our feet as we dance to give our offering to our Father
in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom.